I am so excited you're here because I have more Dollar Tree spooky Halloween DIYs that I know you're gonna love. If that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. First off, I want to say I'm so grateful to be here and I just appreciate those of you who have been super patient with me. I've actually had these projects done for a while, but it's a little crazy over here. But we're finally getting back into the swing of things and for DIY number one, I'm going to take six 8 by 10 frames or I should say canvases from Dollar Tree and I'm going to take my Dritz staple pull that is always linked down in my Amazon shop down below in the description box as well as the pin comment and I'm just going to start by taking all the staples out of the back of the canvases and removing the canvas from the frame. Now yes I know that I can use my own wood and make my own frames however for me personally this is just much easier I don't have to make all the cuts and all all those things I just like removing the staples and gluing them together but if you would like to get your own wood and create this project with your own wood then go for it but I chose to use Dollar Tree products so once all of the canvases are off of the frames I'm gonna take a little bit of weld bond as well as some hot glue and glue three at the top and three at the bottom and I do this so that way the weld bond is gonna make sure that the hold last and the hot glue is gonna make sure that it sticks together pretty quickly to ensure that my frames do not move once I glue them, I did go ahead and clamp them together for a few minutes, again, just to make sure that they stay together nicely. Once they were completely dry, then I'm just going to paint the entire frame, the inside as well as the front, with some ink Waverly chalk paint. Now. If I had more time, I probably would have painted the back. However, because of time purposes, I did just go ahead and paint the inside as well as the top. And then I hit that with my blow dryer to make sure that it's super dry. Next, I'm going to take some crackle medium that I believe I got from Plaid website or Michael's, don't quote me, I've had it for a really, really long time. But the trick with Crackle Medium is you want to put your base layer down, let that dry really, really well, rather you let it air dry or you hit it with a blow dryer because you're impatient like me. Next, you're going to add a nice coat. I wouldn't say a thick coat, but a good coat of your Crackle Medium. The point is you don't want to use this stuff sparingly, so I put a really good coat on it, and then you want to let that dry completely as well. I used my blow dryer once again, and I made sure that layer was really, really, really dry. Now, once that layer is dry, then you're going to put your top layer on. So whatever color you want shining through the crackle, you're going to put at the bottom, obviously. Put the crackle medium in between, and then you're going to put your uh, top layer on. And once that completely dries, that's when the crackle happens. And the trick with the top coat is you do not want to make too many passes with your paint. So if you could have seen what I was doing there, I kind of did one to two swipes in each area. And then I moved on to the next area. And that is how you get the best crackle. So once I was done with my crackle, my painting, whatever you want to call it, then I'm going to take this spooky cloth from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to lay it out on the back of my frame. Once the entire frame in the back was completely covered, then I'm going to take my electric stapler. I love this thing, you guys. My husband even loves it. He got one for his work his work trailer i almost said work shed he doesn't have a work shed i do but anyway if you guys are new here i have a she shed that i absolutely love it's my crafty she shed i actually do have a few videos and shorts if you guys want to see that just let me know in the comments i can definitely get you that link but um, my stapler is also linked in my Amazon shop. I did get it on Amazon and I just go all the way around each frame to make sure that that spooky cloth is not going to go anywhere. 
once they were completely stapled down and I knew that it was in place, then I just cut a little bit of excess or I left a little bit of excess on either side and you're gonna see why in a minute. So I flipped it over and then I'm just gonna glue the excess over the front of the frames. Now, I don't know why people have to spread hate on the internet, but I got a comment that was like, this is not even creative. You guys are gassing her up. This is just frames with a ghost on it. It's not even cool. And I was like, oh God, I don't understand <laughs> why the internet has to be so cruel and why people have nothing better to do. However, I think it turned out really, really cool and I can't wait to show you guys the end product. So once I was done gluing my cloth around the edges and I was not perfect with that, I, I want to preface by saying um, this is spooky, so nothing spooky is perfect. So this would be a perfect beginner project. I want you guys to step outside of your comfort zone. Y'all, if I can do this, I know that you can do it. So anyway, I took this spooky skeleton. I said ghost. I meant skeleton. I took this spooky skeleton from Dollar Tree. I kind of unraveled it because the way that they have it packaged, the arms and the cloth at the bottom are like raveled up. So I just opened up the arms and I positioned the hands in front of the face. And then I went ahead and glued that down by the string at the top of the head over the top of the middle top frame. Once I had that glued down nicely, I also did glue his arms down, by the way. I then took these apothecary jars from Dollar Tree and I just alternated the sizes and I put them in place to make sure I liked the placement and I glued those on either side of the skeleton. Next, I'm going to take these palm bones from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to take them out of my package and use my smallish drill bit to just make the holes at the top of the hands a little bit bigger. This does, they do have holes in them, but they're super, super small and I could not even get a tiny piece of jute in there. So I did just make those holes a little bit bigger and then I took some jute from Dollar Tree. I added a little piece of painter's tape to the end of the jute that way I could string it through easily and then I just strung all of my palm bones on a piece of jute leaving a good amount of jute in between each and you're going to see why here in just a second. Next, I'm going to take that jute and before I cut it, I'm just going to kind of gauge the sizing that I need. So all I'm going to do is just hang these palm bones from the top of each frame. And I just wanted to make sure that I had enough. So once I was satisfied with the length, then I just cut my palm bones apart. I put a knot at the bottom so that way the hand doesn't go anywhere. And I also did a double knot at the top. That way I have a little extra space to glue the jute to the top of the frame if that makes sense. Then I'm going to lay my first one out and I'm going to make three that size and three a little bit smaller because I wanted them to have different heights. Now if you like them all the same height or even more different heights than I have, then use your imagination. I always tell you guys, do your projects to your eyes until your eyes are happy. I am only here for inspiration. So if there is something or a color or whatever the case may be that you don't like that I use, then totally make it your own. Switch up the colors to suit your decor. I just like to say that just in case. I set my palm bones aside and I'm going to do the exact same thing at the top of these two skeletons. These are the skeleton garlands. I just love them so cute. I just love them so cute. Oh my goodness, y'all. It's been a long day. I love them so much. They are so stinking cute. So I took the jute that was already strung onto them. I cut them down to size, tied a double knot at the top, and then glued those to the top of the bottom frames on either side. And then I just went ahead and glued my palm bones to the top frames on either side. Thank you. 
and literally y'all that was it look how spooky this turned out i absolutely love this piece my projects never turn out how I originally picture them in my brain. As I go along, I just kind of add and add and add. And I absolutely love the way this turned out. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think of DIY number one. And as always, I'm always curious to hear after you guys watch the video, which project in this video is your favorite. I am so excited you're here and if you are enjoying this video I would greatly appreciate if you would share it out subscribe if you haven't already it really helps my channel to grow and helps YouTube to notice me a bit more let me know down in the comments which project is your favorite and if there is anything that you request to see from me in the future with that being said let's jump back into today's video For the next DIY, this was actually inspired by the last lantern hand that everybody loved. I'm so glad you guys loved it. I personally loved it myself. But after you guys loved that one, I kind of got an idea to do a different version. So once again, I'm going to take this rectangular wooden piece from Dollar Tree and I'm going to hit it with my ink Waverly chalk paint. And then once that was completely dry, then I just used my mini finger zip sander, also linked down in my Amazon shop down below. I just go ahead and I sand all the edges to make it look distressed and weathered. Next, I'm going to take this gold candle holder from Dollar Tree and I'm going to take the tag off. Um, originally, I glued this skeleton down to my wooden piece, hoping that it would work out and it didn't. Sometimes projects don't work out like you think and you just have to pivot and use your head and kind of come up with something different. So that's what I did. I took this candle holder, I painted it black and once that was completely dry, I just glued it over that spot where you see the feet glue marks <laughs> from the skeleton. I also did take his one arm off and kind of glue that straight I, I don't know what happened to that footage. I guess I forgot to hit the record button, but I did go ahead and glue that arm at the socket of like where the elbow and the shoulder is again to keep it straight. Next, I'm just going to glue my little skeleton's booty inside of the candle holder to make sure that his booty ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Oh, y'all, I cracked myself up. And then I just kind of hide those glue marks on the shoulder as well as the butt with some spider webbing. And I do take that all the way down the candle holder to kind of blend it in. And then I just took this skeleton clip, or no, spider clip from Dollar Tree. I put that right on the Next, I just hung my lantern from the bottom of the skeleton's hand, and that was it, y'all. Look how stunning this turned out. Now, it did not turn out how I originally wanted it to, but I'm still super impressed with the way it looks, and I can't wait to hear what you guys think of this DIY down below. Moving on, we're going to take this Dollar Tree apple pie sign, and although I absolutely love that image, I knew that I wanted to do a, a little something different with this sign. Now, the way that the frame at the top and the bottom are on this sign is just, they're just held on by staples. So, I just removed those staples, and then I removed the top and the bottom. I then give this a distressed coat of my ink Waverly chalk paint, making sure that I also painted the sides. Thank you. 
Next, I'm going to take my skeleton transfer and all of the chalk couture items that I can link down below for you guys will also be in my description box as well as the pinned comment. Well, actually, y'all, I believe that they took links away from in the comment section if they did then always check the description box all you have to do is just click the title of this video and a box will appear that is the description box so if they took the ability to add links to the comments that's where you can find all of the products that i used in this video from chalk couture also, if you want 40% off of everything on the chalk site, it is not a coupon, you guys. You do have to sign up to be a designer, just so you know. Um, but if you guys want that information, I will leave the information down in the description box as well for you. Next, I'm just going to take the spider web from this transfer, and I'm going to transfer it on in each of the corners, um, the top left, and the bottom right if that makes sense once those were completely dry then i'm just going to take the wording which i believe says like double double toil and trouble that whole saying and i'm just going to transfer on those spooky words in the middle of my sign Once that was completely dry, and I always use my blow dryer just to make sure that way the next transfer doesn't pull up what I just transferred, I'm going to take the spider that comes in this transfer, and I'm going to transfer that on in the opposite corners that I did the spider webs, and I just kind of laid the skull in the middle first to make sure that the skull would not cover up the spiders, and then once again, I transferred those on, made sure they were super dry. Next, I'm going to take my chalk couture cutout. We have these new gorgeous cutouts that are coordinating to certain transfers that I absolutely love. And normally, I would use a piece of foam board and cut it out with my hot knife. That way, I had the cutouts for basically like a template. However, time is of the essence these days, so I just went ahead and used my cutout. I transferred on the skull transfer to the cutout, and then I just glued that to the middle. Next, I'm just going to glue down the frame after I dry brushed it with my white Waverly chalk paint. There were a few clips that I think got corrupted there, um, but it was super simple. I just transferred on the skull, like I said, glued it down dry brushed the frames and then added those back on with some weld bond and literally y'all that was it for this sign so simple so easy but looks so high end and so stunning again i probably sound like a broken record but y'all this sign i absolutely love it i can't wait to hear what you think as well Okay, friends, if you have stuck with me this long, I just want you to know I love, I appreciate you so much. Leave me a spooky emoji down in the comment section so I know you're still with me. But for this DIY, I'm going to take this pumpkin sign from Dollar Tree. I'm also going to take my apothecary transfer and just kind of measure the sizing that I need. And then I take my utility knife and I score that a few times and cut off that pumpkin. Next, I'm going to sand down that edge smooth. I do save this little pumpkin piece. Um, I can use that in a different DIY. I don't know about y'all, but I always save stuff like that because I know I can use it later. Also, quick little disclaimer, uh, I do have an 11-month-old breastfed baby who is right here eating. It was his dinner time and this boy does not wait so it's not your baby it's not your dog it's my baby just so y'all know um but anyway once i sanded the edge down smooth then i'm just going to stain the sides as well as the front with my dixie bell voodoo black magic stain and i do take a little tiny bit of my ink waverly chalk paint on the end of my brush and just kind of blend that in i did do one layer 
or I should say one coat, dried it really well, and then did a second coat. And I love the way that that looks. And then I'm just gonna dry brush some white all the way around the sign, as well as in the middle, to make it look even more spooky. Once again, if you don't like dry brushing, you can totally skip this step. Next, I'm going to take my white chalk paste, and y'all, this paste, one jar of paste, I know that the price looks a little bit of, a little bit scary, but listen, y'all, one jar of paste literally lasts probably about a year or better, depending upon how much you use it, and you can also paint with it. You can do a lot of different things, plus it's removable on certain surfaces, so it is definitely worth every penny and more, and when you become a designer, you get everything on the site at 40% off, plus you get a one-time 15% off coupon, so even if you just did it for the first uh, quarter, um, it would totally be worth it. You can get a lot for your money. So that's what I like to tell people when they say that it's super expensive. And look, I get it. We're in crazy times right now. Um, I promise you, I understand. I started out of the kitchen of a single wide trailer. So when I tell you I, under I understand, I do. I've had to bust my bottom for every single thing that I have. And becoming a designer has saved me so, so much money. So, oh, and also you can make money from crafting. So, I mean, it's a win-win, right? Anyway, moving on, I did just go ahead and transfer on my apothecary sign that, mind you, I have used probably about five times now. As long as you wash them and take care of them, you can use these transfers upwards of 50 times. So, I just use my transfer. Of course, I wash it really well so I can use it once again. I set that aside, and then I just take my jar cut cutouts, my apothecary jar cutouts, the coordinating um, chalkable chips, and I just transfer on the apothecary jars that came with this transfer. Once they were completely dry, and I did just use black for all of them. Originally, I was going to try to use different colors, but I'm super matchy-matchy, and I just loved the look of the black and white. I also loved the fact that some of, or two of the jars are more black, two of the jars are more white. So I just coordinated them, one white and black jar on the left, one white and black jar on the right. I glued those together and then I glued those jars to my sign. Once I had my jars glued down, then I just took those little mini skeleton from Dollar Tree. I cut them off of the garland. I also cut the little piece at the top of the skeleton that is actually connected to the garland off. And then I just glued each one in between the jars and the sign. And literally all that was it for this sign. I absolutely love how simple and amazing this turned out. Somebody came at me for saying that a spooky DIY was gorgeous. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. But I think that the things turn out absolutely gorgeous. Rather it's spooky or not. You can let me know down in the comments what you think of that. Um, maybe I'm crazy and it's not gorgeous. But I absolutely think it's stunning. So let me know down in the comments which DIY was your favorite. As always, if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning. You are worthy. You are gorgeous. You can literally do anything you set your mind to coming from an addict who is nine years sober y'all if I can do it I know that you can do it as well if you're struggling I want you to know I am always here you can reach out I will try to help you in any way even if it is just a chat thank you so much for being here don't forget to share this out and I always love to share that I just recently lost 80 pounds of fat and I created a weight loss guide. So if you guys want any chocotour info or my weight loss guide, just text my number on the screen, the word guide or chalk, and I will get that over to y'all. Until next time, I love y'all from the bottom of my heart. Thank you again for being patient, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye! Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload, or join the DIY fam here to your right.